said it a lot of times here, but well, there's nothing wrong with it. So I intended that this session, being the last of the health session, shall be, we will simply, okay, handle questions which we may have been having throughout the sessions. Let's see, how many people have a question that is related to health? There's one. There's just one. Oh, that way. <laughs> All right. It's we don't even have so much time. So we have a panel behind me here that will handle questions. Yes, my brother that had a question. <laughs> Make sure the mic is on. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. I have a question. We all know that we have been in a time whereby the pandemic has really hit us terribly and it has affected us to a greater extent. Now, there is this issue of vaccinations that is being forced. In fact, uh, in Nigeria, they have been forced in Zam uh, Zimbabwe. There is forced vaccinations. Now, the issue of vaccinations, I heard the president, the late president of Tanzania, John Pompe Magufuli, saying that Chanjo has a fi. Now, how can we take it? Are they really important to us? And how does it affect us as far as our Christianity life is concerned and our health as well? Thank you. All right. Now I will answer and someone else will. Now, uh, there are two types of immunity. There's one which you call natural immunity, which we were, uh, I think we talked about yesterday. And then there's the artificial immunity which at this point i would not want to express a position but i would say this god in his wisdom created humanity with an ability with uh, lots of vital force to to protect the body and to restore the body when uh, a disease occurs we read together from the Minister of Healing 127 paragraph 1 and 2 that says that the only, bet, uh, the only hope of better things is in the education of the people on right principles. Maybe we can read it again. There's a book called Minister of Healing there. Someone may bring it. We read. And uh, it's, it ends by saying that in case of disease, the cause should be ascertained and healthful conditions should be changed, habits should be corrected, and then nature is to be assisted in her efforts to expel impurities and to re-establish right conditions. Now that's a pattern that we may all want to follow. But as regards matters of uh, vaccination, my take is let every man be convinced in his own heart. Why? Because I believe while I'm, I may not ascertain that there are agendas behind or f vaccination and so, because these are matters that require deep study and personal conviction. Are we together? We are clearly not. <laughs> these are matters that require deep study because there's science behind vaccination. Now, if you read through the spirit of prophecy, you will realize that God is quite uh, particular about people not using drugs. And if I look at it from that perspective, then I would not want. But of course, a few people will bring uh, quotations that show that even leading ministers of this church took vaccination at some point, and they may want to use that. 
but I love to side with the weight of Bible and SOP evidence. But these matters are quite controversial. That's why I, re I prefer to, be, to, to, let this, to let people decide. After deep study and prayer, you decide. But I know that God has given us natural immunity, which it is our work to build, to boost, and to balance. Okay, God is good. Yeah, on the issue, on that issue, like she has said, uh, it's a very controversial issue even among us, and that is why we prefer that people have what? Personal convictions are better on the same. Because as we speak, there are people already what? Vaccinated even among us. Are we together? Sikwamba they don't believe in Jesus. Are we together? <laughs> they believe in who? And they're also part of our team. And there are others who also are not. Now, maybe the point I will pass across that we need to learn is this. Uh, immunity, like she said, immunity, uh, as we look at it in depth, the best immunity that the, an individual can ever possess, primarily, is the natural what? Immunity. Even the vaccines that have been used from time to time, they only stimulate the natural immunity they are more of adaptive immunity is dependent on on the natural immunity the reason is the adaptation is only embedded on memory and it is embedded on the second aspect that the antibodies can be regenerated quickly and prior to deal with uh, whatever infection it is so if 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 uh if an individual does not have an actively strong natural immunity, even if they stimulate their immunity by introducing a virus or a bacteria into the body persistently, and they don't have sufficient strength in their natural immunity to fight an infection, then still they're at a loss. That is why scientists say the pathogenicity of a virus or a bacteria depends on the ability of the host to resist that infection. What is pathogenicity? It is how dangerous a pathogen is. Are we together? So the, 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 the pathogenicity of COVID depends on the ability of the host to resist. So if it, it finds a host that is already immunocompromised, meaning that host does not have enough immune strength then it will naturally, that person will naturally succumb. That is the reason why if you look at the issue of immunity, we also have some diseases we call what? When someone is already having uh, an immune deficiency, we call the, the illnesses they have later, what name do we call them? Opportunistic what? Diseases. You've heard of that term? What is opportunistic? Why are they opportunistic? Because they are taking advantage of your weakened what? <laughs> Immune system. We are together. So even as much as we may be discussing this issue, primarily we need to understand that much of your time and effort, whether you are getting the vaccine or you are not getting the vaccine, you must have a natural immunity that is strong enough and our sister took some time to tell us that these depend on those eight what eight laws of health they are the ones that strengthen the natural immunity and I, I also want to make one more point that is very important that you understand most of the time the response of the body to infectious diseases is most of the time non-specific as much as it depends on memory, the issue is not how much we can remember, but how prepared is the body. You heard me. It is more of how, how prepared. So the preparedness depends on nutrition. Are you eating food that strengthens the immunity? Are you getting sufficient rest? Are you having exercise? 
Are you breathing fresh air? Do you have a trust in God so that you are not stressed psychologically? We understand that stress lowers immunity. We understand that poor nutrition lowers immunity. We understand very well that improper levels of oxygen in the body lowers immunity. We understand also very well that psychological stress can lower immunity. That is why people who are stressed up are also very sick. So to answer that question, when it comes to the issue about vaccines, the point we always say is it should be a personal choice based on your understanding and how you perceive the issue. Uh, because I know even at this moment there are people who are vaccinated and, and they are still alive. They continue with their life. But when it comes to the conscience and convictions, there are some of us who are more conservative than others with what we want to go into your, our body. You get the point? Yeah. If I understand this issue very well, I may be that con con conservative. So when you talk about forced, uh, forced vaccination uh, in a place... I can just say we pray for our government that we don't get to that. We are together. Yeah. But I want to leave we want to leave it at the level of personal what? Convictions that an individual has within this sphere of the church. Liberty is given to us. So if someone is convinced that they need a shot so that they are free from COVID, we are not telling you that now as a church that we don't want. That is why the church has left it free. So that you may have personal convictions. But you study and be established on what you believe. Now she made it clear also that all the things we need to understand regarding how we are to live are where? SOP and, and the Bible. So we want to leave that to you. And because you'll realize there are, there are people who believe that they need that shot to move on. There are those who believe they don't. And also there are people who, whose immunity are already compromised. There are others also among us who may be having uh, underlying medical conditions like diabetes and others that make COVID very, 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 very dangerous if they, if they get the infection. So those are, those are things that at the end of the day, uh, at the level of the heart, it's personal conviction. So we will not come and teach here and say that in the camp meeting 2021, Sister Tresia said that people should not get vaccinated. Are we together? Neither are we telling here that in Cam 2021, we said you should go get the what. But we have told you, make sure immunity is what. <laughs> it's true. We are together. Yeah. We are also very intelligent in how we answer you. To Kopa Moja. Sawa, sawa. God bless you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I would encourage us to study and have facts before you decide on stuff. Huh? Don't be... As in, it's good to know things for yourself. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, for those who joined us later, we were asking us, okay, not asking, anyone who has a question is invited to ask. And as God will ha uh, 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 enable us, we would deal with them. By the time we were starting, there was just one hand. All right. Before that, there's a hand there. Yeah, there's, there's a, a point you raised which I think is very important to respond to concerning uh, its relationship to uh, spiritual issues. Yeah. Um, uh, what what, 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 what uh, role does it play? Uh, as you may have heard or noticed, people are also trying to connect this with the mark of the beast yeah in revelation chapter 13 verse 16 17 18 uh people are trying to make this issue salvific and uh and uh attest where god has not made it a test so that if you receive the shot you are you are not uh you you are not actually preparing for the ceiling and if you do not then you are actually entering into the ceiling experience so it's very very important to note that um, this particular issue is not in any way a test uh, that is going to be salvific as concerning 
the closure of this earth's history. While the Bible teaches in Matthew chapter 24, that there are going to be signs that are going to precede the coming of Christ. We have um, uh, diseases, pandemics as one of them. And we can be sure that they are, they are, we are going to have much more coming. So what happens to the next one that comes? Mm -hmm. So this one was not a test enough. So you will need to call up another what? Another test. And we know from the book Great Controversy 589, 590, that these visitations are going to become much more frequent and disastrous. So they are going to increase in intensity and frequency. So what's the danger of us lunging at anything that comes and then making it a issue that is a test? What will happen to the subsequent ones that will come? What will we do with ourselves? We'll be people who are just uh, running to and fro uh, with uh, lunging at everything that comes to the world. Certainly, uh, this is an issue that is confronting the world. And of course, heaven has allowed that things should persist and continue as they are. And it's for specific reasons. If you read, uh, you know, God is warning the world of his soon approach. And that is as much as it functions. Mm. So let's be careful about making issues concerning which the Bible has not made issues of. That's a principle. Don't if the Bible is you cannot you cannot be any clearer than the Bible. So if the Bible has not made it an issue, why are you trying to make it an issue? So let's be Bible believing. There are issues on either side of the debate, as we s as we are saying, uh, it's not uh, it's not part of the dogmas of the Seventh Day Adventist Church to choose or to enforce a position on you. Yeah. So try and gather as much as uh, information as is possible from different quarters. Uh, expose yourself to this kind of information. Some of us are afraid of exposing ourselves to the debate on either. Or in the other side. So expose yourself to this kind of information. The promise in the Bible in Psalm 32 verse 8 is that I will teach you and instruct you in the way that you should. It is very easy for me to tell you whether to get vaccinated or not. But it is very, very, e it is very difficult. And I presume that's the reason why people always ask, by the way, so what should we do? What should we do? Uh, by the way, sometimes I think and reason that some of these things arise uh, so that actually you and I may sense our need of Christ's leadership personally. So that you know, you know, it is his voice that is speaking you. It is easier for me to say yes or no behind the pulpit than for you to spend time with God that you may learn his voice, his ways. So let's go do our research and uh, of course uh, make evidence based decisions so so all right thank you very much yes uh, i think uh, i have two questions uh-huh yeah i have the first one i'll talk about uh wait wait yeah okay Yani mwili mzito. That's what I mean. Eh? I don't know if you are I, I believe you are getting me. Uh -huh. uh, when uh, you realize that you are uh, you are eating or you are, you are eating habits are not good, mm -hmm. and you realize that you need to change, and suddenly, let me use suddenly, but it's not sudden. <laughs> suddenly you change. Oh, mysteriously, you change your eating habits, eh? <laughs> and uh, also you mysteriously uh, and suddenly also lose weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as she she told us someday, we could not believe that she was ninety-two to that to that one, and. Uh, 
when you get home <laughs> to your parents there they would ask you a very good question what is wrong with you <laughs> that you are you you went okay and you are coming back emaciated <laughs> <laughs> and so they suggest for you what is good for you what is better for you <laughs> and uh, basically I, i like talking from experience and from my locality the best they will suggest for us daniel uh, uh, kitur knows they will suggest uh, milk and mursik <laughs> it will be better it will better your weight and you look a bit better yeah. and they live and uh, make it better and produce it and give it to you <laughs> and surely if you take it for even two weeks you will see a difference <laughs> they can testify for those who have used them and uh, from experience i did it na niliongeza kweli na nilikuwa nimepunguza you may not uh, you may not see the difference but i know from my my personal uh, i saw the difference <laughs> so i i think we can we can suggest a better way of people getting out of a different eating habit to another one and they look for a way where they cannot look emaciated after after reforming or after moving from their terrible eating habits to a proper one you know you get out of three meals and you go to two meals you will be yawning the whole day before because you are you are learning from from the other and a reasonable quantity of a meal on the plate to a quantity that is a you use it temperately yeah? as far as temperance is concerned that one aside i think you'll advise us on that it's good uh, we get when you are getting from tra- when you are transiting from other from the other terrible eating habits to a good one we need to know how to get from there to there so that you don't you don't create tension also so that when you are explaining the message to others that It is good to move to move from <laughs> terrible eating habits. You yourself you look you want to fall. Wewe unataka kuanguka chini. Because <laughs> because you won't remain with beans and uh, sukuma wiki. All right. I think you are getting my point. I limit your time. Eh? Okay. The last one. The issue of COVID-19. Not uh, about the vaccination, yeah. but about the treatment. Uh I wish that you could enlighten us on if we find such a person who is we tunashuku ni covid eh? kwa sababu at labda atujapima by the look of things unamuona anakaa covid uh <laughs> anakaa covid uh, patient eh tutamshughulikiaje kwa sababu saa hizi let me tell you for a fact ukienda hospital Alafu ufanye makosa uko wewe tu hata kidogo. Unatolewa kwa laini na wanaleta machela unawekwa juu. Na wanapiga simu referral moyo <laughs> teaching and referral hospital book I, uh, ICU ya huyo kijana. Anataka kukufa. Covid imemshika. The next thing they do they wewe direct mpaka oxygen hata kama uko sawa unapumua vizuri. And then you go die there. <laughs> so <laughs> if we find a person eh? ako na such signs tunaweza msaidia aje all right yeah. all right all, uh, as you, uh, <laughs> thank you you have elaborated your questions <laughs> really well first is the transition from a poor diet to a healthy diet now there's one principle which should work you can read it from councils and diets and food uh, I, would, i think i would stretch your question a little one The most important thing you do is not tapering off as some people think where you start reducing uh, on the article of food that is notice but the most important thing we need to do is to learn how to substitute with healthier things because I think why people lose so much weight and sometimes look emaciated is because we are told what to leave but we are not told what to include 
So you stop milk and eggs and meat, but you're not taking anything in its place. And so you start to get emaciated. And sometimes, sadly, we only stop foods, but don't adopt the other principles of health. We don't exercise. We don't take enough water. We don't sunbathe. We don't breathe well. We don't even rest well, but we stopped everything we took, we used to take. So that is likely to bring danger. So number one, as you transit, make sure you're doing everything else. That way, even as you lose weight, it's balanced. Secondly, learn to include. For example, if I stop taking milk, uh, cow milk, I could do so well by supplementing with soy milk, sesame milk, all this plant-based milk. Now, if I'm stopping meat, you do so well to make sure you have your other soy products. Soy, of course, there's so much debate about it, but it's, there's, no, there's also so much which is not true. Good soy that is grown organically is so useful. It's an excellent protein that also uh, provides a wide range of the B complexes. So learn to include and not just exclude. I, uh, again, do not, uh, uh, I would say, do not, in, if, you, if you're dealing with parents, yeah? instead of simply accepting what they say, you can teach, but do not impose. Most of us come from campus with good ideas on health, but we want everyone in our home to stop today. What you stopped in school, and it's not taken so well. Some people think you're mad. They want pastor to come talk to you. So teach. Don't impose. And be very patient with yourself and with people you are, you're teaching. So learn to, you know, I, if we would go article by article, what you remove and what you add, we won't finish. But learn to, if you feel like you're not ready to start including, I would prefer you postpone. Now, I'm not a post it, <laughs> please. But if you know you're not in a position to supply yourself with better meals, for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of uh, prejudice, which is already out there, I would rather you do it really carefully. Now, on your second question, before I, I, we get second opinions, is on COVID treatment. I understand COVID to be a flu, just the same way we would deal with other common flus. If you look at its symptoms, they are not anything out of this world. And so treatments which have been used before on uh, influenza may also work. A good eg uh, ex uh, 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 example of a treatment that works for COVID is what you already use for pneumonia. Now, what is so useful for pneumonia? One is your hydrotherapy. And under hydrotherapy, I would say, now this was a lecture on itself, but now uh, things like the general revulsive. How many have ever heard of how to do a hot foot bath in the first place? Maybe some of us are not aware, but this is a water treatment where we have hot water application to the feet and the body is covered and then the head is cooled. That's the most basic way of describing it. Now, a general revulsive is the same procedure while probably lying down, added with heat applications to the chest and to the spine. So you have a hot towel that is ringed well. You put it at the back, you lie on it, then you keep fermenting. Kuchoma, in the village, you call it kuchoma. The chest, as you also do a hot foot bath. That's a, a, a very excellent way of dealing with someone who is already having complications. Other things that are useful is application of uh, uh, onion poultices to the chest area. You cut onions, mix them with cooking flour, and then apply that as a poultice directly on the skin and let them stay with them overnight. Now, there are concoctions which you can also take. A good example is what we've been taking here with garlic and onion and uh, lemon and a little honey. And because of the severity of the condition, sometimes in real sense and sometimes in perception, you do well to overdo garlic a little. 
You can chew garlic up to four cloves, depending on your weight. Very thin people, we don't recommend beyond two cloves of garlic in a concoction. There are reasons for it. But if you have good weight, you can take up to four cloves of garlic. You can chew it and then take with your food. It's also preventive. You don't have to have a coughing roommate to start taking garlic. It's a good habit. Of course, you, you also didn't want to overdo it because it's a blood thinner in nature, like cayenne pepper. But be in the habit of using uh, garlic. You can make what we call the flu bomb. The flu bomb is simply, uh, well, you have honey as your solvent, which you're using. Other people whose consciences do not prick, you may want to use uh, raw apple cider vinegar as your base. It's also a very, very good at, um, what do you call that, trapping power to heal from things to itself. There's a word I'm, I'm missing. There's a better word, <laughs> I can't remember. But honey and raw apple cider vinegar. And then in it, you put garlic, about a bulb, a full bulb of garlic, a big onion, big onion, red onion. And then inside, you will also add a few drops of uh, clove oil. If you don't have clove oil, you may want to do black seed oil. A few drops too, not so much, maybe about five, that should do. And then you have your ginger and lemon and what else did I mention? Garlic, onion, uh, ginger and lemon in honey or uh, apple cider vinegar and drops of cloves. Clove oil is better than simply cloves. But if you can't access clove oil, you can just use your cloves or black seeds. And then you can do one essential oil, maybe a few drops of either eucalyptus or peppermint. Now that thing doesn't spoil. In fact, the longer it stays, the better it gets. It clears up the chest and it's also uh, a natural anti antibiotic that you can use. I'm not seeing anyone writing these <laughs> things down, including the one who asked. All right, so that's one thing. We call it the flu bomb. Then we have the natural penicillin, which works for almost a whole, especially pneumonia. I've personally used it on pneumonia on someone, and it's excellent. Now you need one liter of water and three whole lemons, a whole bulb of garlic, a pinch of cayenne pepper. That should be about an eighth of a teaspoon and rock salt about half a teaspoon okay should be a, a, a teaspoon but it may be it may get quite uh, bitter maybe half a teaspoon you need garlic lemons if you don't have uh, lemons there's another very imp uh, uh, important food that is very antibiotic it's called grapefruit it's really need to a dancy you know a grapefruit it usually looks like an orange, but it's bigger. And then it's bitter. Ukimeza inacha kauchungu apa. How many of you know that fruit? It's called grapefruit. And uh, there's horseradish. If you can find it, horseradish is also really nice. Antibi natural antibiotic. You make a tea of these things. Your, uh, your, your ginger and rock salt and cayenne pepper and lemon or, um, or what do you say? grapefruit and horseradish most of us will go to the market and look for horseradish they'll give you white radish it's not the one there's one called horseradish it's a root that is quite hairy it's not so common but i there's somewhere in nairobi you may find it somewhere in two rivers but if you can't find it you still have enough make that tea and drink it a cup in the morning and in the midday and in the evening those are natural antibiotic uh, penicillins that you may you may use so you don't need to panic 
if you have a roommate, do them hot fermentations to the chest as you do them a hot food bath. Give them these drinks. Make them chew garlic. They will feel better. I personally know of two friends that have had COVID, tested, not kushuku, <laughs> and they are well today. So don't panic and pray much. Pray much. The problem with us is that we love to fear, and fear breaks down your life forces, and we become susceptible to these things. Yes. Any of us wants to add? All right, uh, the last question. Our time is almost up. We'll take the last question. If there's none, anyone with a question? There's a hand. I'm see yes. Uh, my question is, uh -huh. uh, we are advised to take uh, two meals in a day, but if three, the, the third one should be light and several hours before bed. Yes. Uh, what is this the meaning of several hours? Is it only two hours or three hours or five hours or six hours? Recommended is two to, uh, sorry, three to four hours before bed. That means if I'm sleeping at 10... My last meal should be about 6 p.m. And that should be light. Now, I know light is relative. At the same time, because someone would eat a plate of githeri, it's light for them. There, there, there are four laws of dieting that I love to refer to. Because these things are... It's not wrong, by the way. I, I, didn't, mean to, uh, I didn't say it's relative because it's funny. But it's actually true because how much food anybody needs is dependent on so many issues. The first law of dieting is usually the law of quality, which demands that the food you eat should be able to meet the five needs of the body. Now, what are the five needs of the body? Growth, repair and maintenance, physical activity, mental activity, and... Hey, this is biology form one. See, I dropped it at form two, but I can remember. And grow, uh, sorry, I said growth, physical activity, mental activity, repair and maintenance of your tissue, and reproduction. If food is, uh, is of good quality, it should meet those five needs. Now, you realize growth is relative. For example, a child needs much more than a, an adult. So I cannot use the same standard for an adult. Now, the second law of dieting is the law of quantity, which says that my, the food I eat should be able to supply, I don't know whether I interchange them, but the, it says that the body should be able to supply, the food I eat should be able to supply me with the six nutrients. That is carbohydrate, vitamin, protein, minerals, lipids, which are fats and oils, and water. It's also considered a mineral. So in a day, at least I should supply my body with all those. You've heard of ideas like ketogenic diets, which basically you subsist on protein. That was never God's plan, really. That's the second law. Supply yourself with all the nutrients. First, meet the needs of the body. Now, the third law is the law of sufficiency, which says the food I eat should be able to meet the needs of my size, age, and physical condition. Size, age, and physical condition. Now, that is a, lo a long study on its own, but take time and find it out. For example, physical condition. Someone who's sick and someone who's whole. Who needs more food, uh, less food? The sick person. But is it uh, what do people do? If I'm sick, everyone is so pitiful. Cooler, cooler. If that day you can even get what naturally your mother would not buy you when you are sick. Anything you want, they... But the truth is, when you're sick, the same vital force that the body expends to break down food is the same force used in, re, uh, in restoration of the body. That's why sick people need little food, and if possible, it should be blended, partially digested, broken down for them, so that the body can concentrate on restoration and not in breakdown. 
So uh, small is relative and large is also relative. Another important thing I, I, I missed is, again, the amount of food depends on your environment, like weather. People who live in go very cold places need more or less food. Why? Because one way the body maintains temperatures is by what? The breakdown of food. So someone who lives in Mombasa and someone who lives in Eldoret, their, their amount of food may differ and none is sinning. All that God wants us to observe is the rule of not overeating or eating too often. Are we together? Now, the question was, how late? Normally, it takes about three to five hours to break down food, depending on which article of food. What takes the longest to break down? Yeah? The longest thing that takes, uh, the longest, rather, the articles of food is protein and fat. That's what takes longest, followed by vegetables, and then carbs and fruits. So if I'm doing my last meal that is largely protein, you know you need up to four to five hours before it's done. But if I'm taking a meal that is just carbohydrate based, I know I have around three hours. But if they are just fruits, even vegetables take long. If, I, if I'm doing a meal that is largely simply carbs, simple carbs, even carbohydrate where they have different degrees, we have simple carbohydrate and complex. If it's a simple carb, so you need information. No, I, I can't say take two hours because most fruits like melons are done in 30 minutes. So if I took a melon 30 minutes before bed, I can be sure by the time I'm going to sleep, it's already done. See you. So I, what would be the need of waiting four hours for melon to digest? So study and then apply facts. Eh? Don't just say, because you've ever heard of the principle that says, if you put your hands together like this, that's the size of ugali you should take. They say ugali inatosha, ile inatoshana na ngumi yako. <laughs> but I believe they are not based on true science. Yeah? Again, the issue of two and three meals. It's not a matter I should impose. Because bodies are particular. And the needs of a body are what? I cannot say as UOE. We will only work with some may suffer and others who you insist on giving three meals don't need them. So I think as it regards health, we need to be always wise and understand that there are peculiarities. Did you know that even in spirit of prophecy, there are people whom we are advised not to take off from animal products like eggs and milk? Did you know? And there are conditions where I can use an animal product as treatment, like raw eggs or even cooked eggs. You would read of such places. So I think we need to be know that these laws are principles, but they are special cases sometimes and do not impose. Everyone should be able to understand their body. We are, it's scientific. Your body speaks. Do you know your body speaks? Okay. No, some are not agreeing. But your body speaks to you. How does the body speak? Through the laws of health. See you. And another law which is so important, which says you reap what you sow. Again, that's another law that the body observes. For example, there are people who have thyroid issues. They have maybe hyperthyroidism. And because of that, their BMR is so, far, is, is so high. Their, the way their body breaks down and utilizes food is so fast and they never gain weight. But there are others who are hypo. Their thymus is hypoactive and what happens is their body metabolic rate is slow and they have an easy time gaining weight and a hard time losing weight. So can, if someone is suffering from hyperthyroidism, for example, they will be hungry again in very few hours. So if they eat, should I condemn them? <laughs> no. There's so much wisdom needed as we deal with people. Understand your body. Your body speaks. You should be able to know when you've overeaten. Yeah? 
Of course, there is overeating that is quite obvious. I saw someone eat seven chapatis, and under whatever circumstance, that is overeating. Seven whole brown. <laughs> there, you cannot tell us temperance is relative. But you know when you get full. In fact, you are told when you are full and you stand from the table, you should feel that you can eat a little more. If you, are, if you stand up from your table and you feel like you cannot take anything else, you have overeaten. There should remain space. If you were given another uh, some other article of food, you should be able to take without much problems. Are we together? Yes. We'll end it there. Unless uh, my brothers here have something they wanted to add. Yeah, it was just something uh, we noted uh, together with Joshua concerning COVID-19 and its treatment. Um, um, you do not want to play doctor when certain people who are at, uh, who have that particular infection have underlying conditions, what doctors call comorbidities. So you do not want to play doctor with that. So uh, it may get to serious illness stage. And when it gets to serious illness stage, now uh, you need someone on a ventilator, hospitalization. And of course, uh, this is 50-50. Even death um, is very, very uh, possible. When you're, when, so uh, pay attention. Know your patients. Know, your, know, the, some, know that person who you're ministering to. And uh, uh, be very, very careful in as regards handling with people who have underlying conditions. You know, there are very many heart diseases, lung diseases, uh, brain issues, diabetes, and so on and so forth. Yeah, even AIDS. Yes, AIDS, uh, HIV. There are a lot of them. If you want to find uh, uh, the underlying health conditions and comorbidities, there is a very good list uh, online. And I think best... Uh, get in touch with the nearest uh, health center uh, before you play doctor. All right. Oh. All right. Um, Joshua, I don't need... All right. Uh, let's rise for prayer. We want to thank you, our Father, for granting us opportunity to learn concerning health over the course of the week. We've had opportunity to ask questions. We pray, Lord, that you continue to grant us wisdom wherein we lack. I pray, Master, that you will give time to be intelligent as concerning disease, its causes. And, Lord, that we may be able to be better fitted to be ministers even as we go with the everlasting gospel. Bless your children. Bless us all. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.